Hi, I'm David Abraham. I am the lead singer of the Cognac Net, and you are watching Rhythm Nation TV. I think I've always been interested in music since I was uh, since I was born, and um, I used to always listen to my my parents' music. You know, grew up with Elvis and uh, CCR. But I think in uh, when I was eight years old, uh, when I discovered bands like Guns N' Roses and Megadeth, and I grew up with the heavy metal as the foundation, um, I understood how beautiful it is to listen to music that's not commercial or not pop or not on TV all the time, and. Uh, it was just, I, mean, I just knew from the beginning that I, I love music and that's, it's something passionate that um, made me feel a, a certain way that nothing else made me feel. Being in, in, uh, in my school, there weren't too many musicians around. There must have been four guitarists and that's how I learned how to play guitar. And um, I used to always love singing along with my songs. Uh, with the songs that I used to listen to and I guess people who told me that I had a decent voice and uh, uh, as a front man I just naturally got into that whole situation, that, that role and I've always been, and I love singing. In high school, uh, I, used to, I used to always crave new music. I used to love listening to music that was so obscure and uh, not heard in India. Uh, you know, during, that, uh, during the 90s where bands like Toadies and Super Drag and Everclear and, uh, and I, I think when I fell in love with these bands and I wanted to play the music, I wanted to replicate that music, you know, just to sort of see how it felt with the, uh, you know, how it resonated with myself. Uh, that's when I knew that I kind of wanted to pursue it. Uh, I didn't know it was going to be a professional thing, but I just wanted to do it because I loved it. Oh God, I was, uh, I, can, I can still remember it also. The first uh, station that ever played my music was an a in, independent radio station in Germany. And uh, man, I freaked out. It was like as if it played on one of the biggest stations in the world. I, I, I remember calling my parents and uh, you know telling them, and, and they've always been supportive. So it was it was like I was like a little schoolgirl <laughs> uh, running around and you know waving my hands, and I'm like, yes, I'm I'm on I'm on a radio station. Uh, I try to do at least 45 minutes to an hour every day. Uh, whenever I get time. From musicians of bands from every decade, I think. Uh, from, you know, from the golden age where you have CCR and Spooky Tooth and uh, David Bowie. And then uh, from the 90s is actually the, the era that I grew up in. And bands like the, the, the Toadies and um, uh, the Deftones, of course, Helmet, uh, bands like that. Yeah. I've, I've got a lot of influences. I think it was Nirvana's About a Girl. It was the first song that I ever played, ever learned. That's a tough one because I am a multi-genre enthusiast and lover. I, I've, uh, I love uh, all the sub-genres of rock, well most of them like uh, you know, grunge, alternative, heavy metal, uh, psychedelic, indie obviously. Uh, I also grew up on a lot of hip hop and uh, Paris House, New Funk, Blues. So those are the main uh, genres that I, I listen to every day. No, um, I, they're not musical, but they're music fanatics. My dad, especially, he's a jazz and blues uh, uh, fanatic, and I think I got that 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 desire and that. Uh, you know, to, uh, for owning music and for listening to music every single day from him and from my mom. I think all of it uh, dates back to my high school. Uh, I think just because nobody really was listening to that music, it, it was more personal to me. So there were a lot of, I, I, there was a lot actually. There's Deftones, Not A Surf, there's certain songs that uh, just 
Whenever I hear it, I just go straight back to my high school and just good memories of uh, listening to good music. I'm gonna have to say the Deftones White Pony. Being given two paths in life and you always want to pick the, the, the more uh, the brighter one, the, the, the more beautiful one and in the end you don't get it, you start cursing yourself, you start cursing God, you're like why, why didn't I go down that path and then later in life you realize that the path that you were forced to take was actually a better one. So it, it's, it's, I guess it, it's to do with optimism, it's, it's got to do with uh, that uh, the choices that you make or you're dealt with are not necessarily bad. Emotion, yes, but through the instruments, through the instrumentation. So for me, gu guitar and vocal melody is very important for me. Uh, something that evokes like a, almost like a sadness, but in a good way, in a positive way. Uh, when it comes to lyrics though, I, I love writing about the most odd things. So I've written about women who kill men for insurance money. I've uh, written about, um, I, I'm a sci-fi nerd, so I've written a lot about like uh, horror and sci-fi. So I, I like doing, um, oh, touching subjects that not many people really talk about, you know, or sing about. I have a number. Uh, sometimes I have a melody in my head, whether it's vocal or guitar, and I just write it down or I record it on my phone and then I get back to it later. I've had instances where I've had uh, songs playing in my dreams and I wake up and I actually remember them and I work on that. And like I said, uh, even I'm a big sci-fi fanatic, so sometimes even shows or something that really like moves me, uh, allows me to get ideas. Doing the first album that we did, it started off as a solo project and I wanted to see where it would go, how it would be um, received in countries other than my own country, you know. And it's the first time I've ever released music as a, a commercially. And uh, I think once it started doing really well abroad, especially in the countries that I wanted it to, to do well, which was you know the US, UK, uh, Australia, Germany, so on and so forth, uh, Canada also, of course. And once we started, I, we started getting a lot of response, uh, positive responses, and people saying that you know you, your music is really good, you need to come here and play, you need to get a band together and come and play. I think that's when I realized that this is, I'm gonna go with this because I love doing it and, and it, it can do well, it can do well. There are two completely different, uh, uh, I, I think, practices. I, I love them both. I, it's completely different feelings. Completely. When you write music, it's more emotional. When you're on stage, it's it's a completely different energy. It's much raw, raw, and uh, it's it just two completely separate but very, very wonderful feelings. Don't forget your lyrics. That's my main, I think. Um, my main issue is that I tend to forget lyrics really fast. I hooked up with a amazing, an amazing musician, uh, Gino Banks, who everybody in India knows about. And we decided to sort of do a show where we promote music that we love but is never heard in, in India. So we did stuff like, you know, uh, System of Down and Radiohead and uh, uh, Deftones and so on and so forth. And I think that was, that was the first show we had, which was at Raspberry Rhinoceros, if I'm not mistaken, uh, when it was still around. And it was, it was a fun show. Right now, the Cognac Net is working on a new album. Uh, it's like a, it's an eight song album. And uh, we hope to get it all done in the next couple of months, at least the writing process in the next month. And then we're gonna try and sit down and, and start recording it. And, uh, we're excited about it because we're very happy with the material. We've played it for a couple of people and they really like it, so we're excited. <music> the 
no, no good luck charms, but I do always do at least uh, uh, 10 minutes or 15 minutes of vocal exercises because I'm one of those singers that uh, without those exercises, I, I tend to sort of just sort of close up and uh, I don't hit the notes that I, I really want to hit. But so that's the only thing I really do. There's no ritual. Shockingly, we played a show, we played for a festival, Zero Music Festival, um, last year. Oh, so, yeah, last, last year. And um, we weren't expecting a huge crowd. We weren't expecting, because it was the first time we've ever played in AP. And the crowd was unbelievable. I think uh, the people were going nuts. I, I went down, I went off stage to interact uh, with the, the crowd for the last song. And I literally had, the, there were bodyguards there that were pulling me back because the audience members were trying to rip my shirt off. And I've never had, that's never happened to us before, so I forgot my lyrics at that point because I was shocked. And even after the show, there were people constantly coming up to us and they were just, we've never heard music like this and uh, you guys are amazing and amazing. And we've got some 150, 200 fans uh, just from that one show and from that one region. Bangalore. Uh, we played there a number of times, but our first show ever in Bangalore, uh, I don't think they promoted it, uh, and we didn't really have too many people over there in Bangalore. We just had a couple of friends. So I had five friends of mine come for the show, and that was it. There were five people in that entire audience. And uh, we just treated it as another, like a jam, and uh, it, it was fun. It was fun. But it was by far the worst show that we had. For me personally, uh, I have the biggest issue is finding time to, uh, to practice because I'm also the manager of the band so I spend a lot of time, a lot of time every single day uh, promoting networking and so getting that time to sit down and practice because you need at least like two hours, three hours if I've got to do vocal lessons, I've got to do uh, guitar exercises. So it's, I think that might be one of the most uh, challenging things just to find time to do it. For me, I think it relates to the other question you asked, uh, it's uh, going on tour, being on the road. I, I think if we manage to, uh, to play in the States or Europe um, and we're, we're touring and we're actually playing for fans over there, uh, I, th I think that would be one level of success. And another thing is I really want to play in Japan. That's, I think it, it's one of the hardest places to play in and I think if we do that, it's a very significant level of success. I'm gonna have to say the Cognac Net uh, because it's my baby, it's, it's, it's something I created and it's doing well, people appreciate it. We've got an amazing shows, uh, so I would, yeah, I would have to say the Cognac Net. Most definitely touring abroad. Uh, that's a huge challenge for me right now, it's a, it's a huge difficulty. Uh, I definitely wanna play in the places that I, I the countries that created bands that I grew up listening to and that I respect and love and I want to sort of give back everything I do all my music is it's almost like a tribute to all these bands you know and uh, whether it's hip-hop or rock it doesn't matter and I want to play in those countries it's, it's just my way of saying thank you and I, that's what I want to do I've had instances uh, a few instances where uh, we've had thousands of emails uh, from people from radio stations blogs and whatnot saying that your music is amazing and then there'll be one guy who uh, or, or girl who will write to you and saying listen man your music sucks and I cannot feature it and I, it ha it's happened to me and it was devastating it's as if that one comment meant everything it was it defined your music and who you were and you almost feel like you need to just stop and every one of you is going to go through this and I, the, the best advice I can give is not to get deterred by it, not to uh, feel like you're going to fail in life. Uh, it's, you're always going to have people who like your music and don't like your music. And if somebody tells you they don't like it, it's cool, man. Just there's another person right next door who is going to love your music and, and support you. And you need to keep doing it. Keep believing in what you, what you love doing.